Good evening, I'm Byron Scott with a CTV News update. The death toll from that blizzard that blanketed Erie County, New York, continues to rise. According to reports, 37 people have died from the masses of winter storm. The city of Buffalo was hit the hardest with almost four feet of snow. Former Maryland State Delegate Bill Bronrot, who now lives in Buffalo, says he didn't lose power, but opened his house to neighbors that did. One of the first things I learned when I moved to Buffalo three years ago is that the city is known as uh, uh, the, the, the city of good neighbors. And I have learned that in, in large measure, that is, that is true. Um, some of my neighbors, um, even across the street, were without power for 48 hours, and several of them spent Christmas Eve uh, here and slept over. And uh, we uh, had ourselves, uh, what was probably for them, a, a unique Christmas morning. Uh, hanging out, uh, you know, drinking coffee and uh, making everybody a uh, little, little Christmas breakfast. Buffalo's travel ban has been lifted and the city's under a travel advisory. The snowstorm has hit other parts of the con con uh, country, claiming about uh, two dozen lives. Well, cold weather conditions have caused at least six deaths in Maryland in recent weeks. That's according to the state health officials. Three of the deaths occurred in Baltimore City. Prince George's had one death in Allegheny and Wicomico counties, one each. Officials suspect the three of the six were homeless. Well, here are the latest COVID-19 numbers for our area. The Maryland Department of Health has confirmed nearly 1,700 new cases. The county's positivity rate continues to rise. It is now at 18.64 percent. 14 Marylanders have died over the past 24 hours. 800 people are hospitalized. Well, if you plan to travel to China soon, listen up. The CDC will begin requiring all passengers traveling from China to the U.S. to provide a negative COVID-19 test, and that begins Thursday, January 5th. The mandate applies to air travelers ages 2 and older. Officials say airlines must confirm that passengers have tested negative before boarding flights. Well, state police are investigating a deadly pedestrian crash in the Kettering area. It happened on Central Avenue at Enterprise Road just before 6 o'clock last night. Investigators say a male pedestrian was hit at the intersection and was taken to a local hospital where he was pronounced dead. The driver of the vehicle and a child passenger were treated for injuries they sustained. The cause of that crash remains under investigation. And you're watching CTV News. I'm Byron Scott. More news in just a bit. Stay tuned. Remember our first group photo? This is it. Smiles all around, even though we were all nervous. Who could have imagined that our first weekend together would soon turn into a lifetime of memories? You're an amazing young man. Your brothers and sisters really look up to you. They're a big brother. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become, and you really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you. You know, it took 20 years and I got my third child who was 17 at the time. There are so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. I, just, I ain't never felt so much love before in my life. Maryland workers who earn a minimum wage will see a larger paycheck next year. The state minimum wage is increasing from $12.50 an hour to $13.25 for any business with at least 15 employees. Businesses with fewer employees will have to pay $12.80 an hour. Lawmakers approved the wage hike back in 2019 as part of a gradual increase that eventually reaches $15 an hour in 2025. The minimum wage increase does not apply to tipped or gig workers such as restaurant servers and Uber drivers. Only days after winning a key leadership post in the U.S. House, Congressman Jamie Raskin discloses that he has been diagnosed with an aggressive form of cancer. The cancer, a form of lymphoma, is considered serious but curable. Raskin says he is about to undergo a course of chemoimmunotherapy. It's for diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, the same cancer that Governor Larry Hogan was diagnosed with back in 2015. Hogan has since made a full recovery. This is Raskin's second bout with cancer. He underwent treatment for colon cancer in 2010, but he's a member of the Maryland Senate. 
Well, the deadline to enroll in the state's health insurance marketplace is fast approaching. Marylanders have until December 31st to get a Maryland Health Connection plan that begins on January 1st. It's also the only place to get financial help with coverage. And our new federal rule could benefit a family's el eligibility for tax credits. Those who qualify for Medicaid may enroll any time in the year. For more information, log on to MarylandHealthConnection.gov. Well, with New Year's Eve just two days away, now's the time to plan your ride home. The Washington Regional Alcohol Program will provide three rides, free rides through the Sober Ride Program to customers in the Washington metro area. It's working with the Ride Share Service Lyft to offer free rides up to $15. Officials say nearly 1,000 residents took part in the program back in 2019. I think it's ex ex extremely critical, especially during periods where you have this high risk, high alcohol consumption period. And that's absolutely New Year's. I mean, it's one thing when you talk about Christmas, as we just had, where 39% of all traffic deaths in this country involve drunk drivers. But when you focus on New Year's, according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, it's virtually half, 49% of all traffic deaths in this country over New Year's involve drunk drivers, which is why this, port this program is important. Well, the code to get a free ride will be posted on SoberRide.com at 9 p.m. New Year's Eve. Lyft users will be, will be able to put the code into their Lyft app. The code is valid until 4 a.m. on New Year's Day. Well, and still ahead on the news, we take you to Upper Marlboro for the In the Water basketball tournament. Stay with us. And is this with the doctor or is this with the nurse practitioner? You are loved. Oh, you... <laughs> Look at those freckles. This was very much... You are valued. Yeah. <laughs> you are strong. You are resilient. You got this. You are there for them. We are here for you. Find free care guides to support you and your loved one at aarp.org slash caregiving. Well, the In the Water basketball battle is underway at the Showplace Arena. High school basketball teams from all over the DMV are competing and showing off their skills. The Lago High School girls team tipped off against Theodore Roosevelt High this afternoon. Alexandria City High School, Friendship Tech, Prep, Gwynn Park, and Jackson Reed also take to the court today at Showplace Arena. The tournament runs through tomorrow. And Carson Wentz is now the starting quarterback for the Washington Commanders. He'll be under center for Sunday's game against the Cleveland Browns as the team fights for a playoff berth. The Commanders went 5-3-1 with Taylor Heineke as quarterback, but with two straight losses, head coach Ron Rivera switched to Wentz, who hasn't played since week six, and is looking forward to playing again. It's been exciting and fun for me to watch, um, obviously going through rehab, and then as, as the backup the last couple weeks, just seeing... Uh, Brian, AG, even Jay will get in there. Just the way they run, the, the way the O line um, moves people up front. I think it's it's always fun to just see, you know, Brian especially finishing runs. You know, he's hit at two yards, but we're all of a sudden we're in second and five. You know, stuff like that that I think can just wear down an opponent. I think it has been fun for me to see from the sideline, and I'm excited to, to see it firsthand and see how that potentially opens up some other things in the passing game and, and to be a part of that, um, and then distri just distribute the ball to the playmakers. And the Commanders play at 1 o'clock at FedEx Field. Well, it's an exciting time for the Chirps as they take the field against North Carolina State in the Dukes Mayo Bowl game. That's tomorrow. The win will give the Terps their best record under head coach Mike Loxley. The Terps went 7-6 and six last year, but a victory tomorrow will give them an 8-5 and five record. I'm really proud of this team. You know, that's definitely a step up from last year, uh, being 7-6 last year. A chance to win another game and, you know, move to that 8-5 and five slot. 
um, I feel like it's definitely pivotal in the in the way that we want to turn this this table of this uh, program. So uh, it's definitely uh, important to myself and the rest of the team that we go out there and get it done. And the kickoff is tomorrow at noon. Well, let's now get a quick check on our three day weather forecast tonight. Mostly clear with a low around 31. Tomorrow, mostly sunny with a high near 60. Saturday, rain expected throughout the day with temps near 58 degrees. Sunday, mostly sunny and warm with a high near 59. And now for the community calendar, the Prince George's County Department of Parks and, and Planning is asking for community feedback. Officials want to know what you think about the future of the public playhouse. They also want to know what you think about the department's online accessibility. To comment on those issues and more, visit pgparks.com and search for community feedback. And that's our news for tonight. I'm Byron Scott. We'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.